Could hedge funds be the new canary in the economy coal mine? Will the performance of Tiger Global, this is, guys, this is one of the biggest hedge funds in the entire industry, down 52% just this year, clocking $17 billion in losses, much of it attributed to huge investments in Silicon Valley unicorns, which have recently floundered along with the tech sector, right? Then there's D1 Capital Partners, which last year posted a gigantic portfolio gain of 70%. It's now scrambling after tw down 23% year to date after having borrowed $2 billion to take stakes in private companies whose valuations, you guessed it, have now plunged. And then last month, Melvin Capital's Gabe Plotkin pulled the plug on his fund after wrong-footed short bets on GameStop, among other names. As many hedge fund traders find themselves on the wrong end of the markets, which are either in or hovering around bear territory, is the worst yet to come. Let's bring in hedge fund veteran Raj Rajaratnam. He founded and managed the Galleon Group hedge fund until an insider trading case forced its closure in 2009. Raj now runs his family office, Cinnamon Global. How much worse is this going to get? I mean, these are just a couple of names that have reported their very bad performance. Yeah, I think it's going to get a lot worse, Liz, because what I'm astounded by is the lack of risk discipline in these hedge funds. We talk about asset bubbles in meme stocks. We talk about bubbles in SPACs. We talk about bubbles in cryptocurrency. But these are supposed to be some of the most sophisticated investors. And the reason people give 2% management fee and 20% incentive fee is to manage the risk in down markets. What we've seen is that the large hedge funds, long short equity hedge funds, have got into SPAC investing, have got into private equity investing, got into venture capital investing, which is not their traditional expertise. And they're borrowing money. So when the market turns, they're not able to be flexible and move quickly. What amazes me is people, as you say, are paying these guys to be much smarter than the rest of us in the room. And look what is happening here. When the markets flip a switch and the tables do turn, that's when, as Buffett likes to say, uh, you see who's been swimming naked as the tide goes out. Okay. Well, I know you can't name names, but what types of bets have gone so wrong way that we will start to see some hedge funds that have made those bets maybe go under? Well, if you're down 50 percent, 5-0, you need to make another 100 percent on your capital to get to break even. So if you start at 100, you go to 50, now you have to double the 50 to get to 100. So there's going to be a lot of hedge funds that are under what they call their high water mark. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to work for free, so some of them will close down and possibly restart again. And then their investors come knocking at the door as well. It's just, it just it's, starts it's just falling like dominoes, falling, saying we yeah, want to pull our pull money out. Pull the money out. So uh, I think there are a whole bunch of hedge funds that will close shop, either because investors are taking money out or because they don't want to stay the course. Um, so the most important thing to be a hedge fund manager is to manage risk. And that's why investors give you yeah. the high incentive fee. Hence the term hedge. hedge You're correctly. supposed to hedge. Let me ask now, they also are getting another stumbling block thrown at their feet, and that is the potential rule change to trading that Gary Gensler, the Securities and Exchange Commission chair, wants to make. Uh, hedge funds make massive block trades. How do you foresee his changes potentially involving things like uh, ending payment for order flow practices uh, affecting hedge funds? And, and quite frankly, could any kind of contagion spill over to the retail investor? So this payment for order flow is mainly aimed at the retail investor. Today, right. the retail investor accounts for about 20 percent of the trading. So firms like Charles Schwab, E-Trade, the big retail brokerage firms, Ameritrade, Robin Hood, they shop these orders to a firm like Citadel or Virtue, and they get paid for that order flow. In fact, these brokerage firms last year made $3.8 billion paying the brokerage firms for order flow. Right. Now, what do you do if you're E-Trade or Charles Schwab? You give it to your favorite execution broker. And while the public thinks they're getting no commission, they're not getting the best execution price. So there's, there's commissions built in, into the system. So I think it's a great idea that Gensler is trying to make it much more competitive and put it into an auction system.
But knowing Washington and knowing the lobby of the brokerage firms, I'm not optimistic that anything will get done in the near future. Well, you are running money for your family office. Uh, the markets have been very hard to anticipate. What do you see as an opportunity right now, Raj? Yeah, so we invest in disruptive technologies. And we've been very cautious on the market. We, it's a very, very challenging year this year. What we are seeing now is the valuations have compressed. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing is looking at companies or sectors that are somewhat recession resistant. So there are three sectors we've identified. One is cybersecurity. Every day, people are trying to hack companies in the United States. We look at cloud computing, which is important, and electric vehicles. It's trend towards clean energy and electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's a secular trend. And within that, we have companies that we've invested in. Good to see you, Raj. Uh, please come back because I know this hedge fund story is far from over. A lot of them may start to fall and stumble and then outright pull the plug. Raj Rajaratnam, good Thank to you, see you. Liz. Take care.